Hello and welcome to this bonus midweek edition of Rising Match Day this Wednesday the 4th of August. I'm Owen Evans, here to run through the top things you need to know ahead of tonight's game against Oakland Roots. Because we're on a tight schedule this Wednesday, let's kick straight in by looking at last weekend. Rising facing off in an out of division clash with RGV, the first time the Toro has travelled to Phoenix since May 2019. And it was rising on the board first. I'm sure he'll tell you it was a shot, but this cross from Daniel King takes a slight nick off the defender after going over everyone else's head. He gets the credit for the goal. It was heading in after all. 1 0 to rising. Shortly after, they double the advantage. Arturo Rodriguez draws away a defender, opening up a gap, Aiden Quinn exploiting it, and he scores, making it 2 0. Rodriguez with the free kick. It's perfectly placed, Rufat Dadashov getting onto the end of it. That's his second in three games for the striker who had his struggles earlier in the year. Second half, rising not overall at their best. They do give up one. Vera to Azakar, 3-1 the score. But that's all that RGV could manage, rising, taking the three points at home. Here's the post-game reaction. I thought we started extremely well. The first half was fantastic. Um, you know, the only thing we talked about at halftime was, can we get a fourth goal in the first 10 minutes and kind of kill the game? And I knew that if, uh, if we could, we could rest some guys and prepare for the rest of the week. And I think that's a mistake I made. When you start talking about giving guys rest, uh, you know, bad things can happen, it's bad omen, so I would have been better off just keeping my mouth shut and subbing them when I felt like I needed to bring them out. I'm really happy that, I, that I'm back in my shape and that I can help the team again after my small injury and small breaks. Uh, I get uh, really fit, uh, I worked really hard and now I'm back. Of course I got the final test. <laughs> Rufat has his goal so he can give me one. Uh, no, it was good, you know, I think they were a little bit worried about our dangerous guys up top and they kind of let us be a little free, the outside backs. And just took an opportunity, whipped it in the area, and I whipped it in as a shot, not a cross. I think they, because of the result at the time, some of the guys got a little complacent, and you know we'll, we'll talk about it. But now's not the time. We got our three points at home. We go on the road on Wednesday, and uh, I, I'm very glad that that you know we got another win. It's a, it, it's been a great month. I think July were five wins and a draw, so uh, exactly what we wanted. So Rising led the way in most categories out there, yes it wasn't the best of second half performances but it didn't come back to bite them and they end the 90 with the lead in the most important row up at the top there. So Rising take the three points continuing their run of good form but what was going on around the rest of the Pacific Division? We'll start with Oakland Roots hosting Orange County on Saturday. The visitors find the net first, Kobe Henry with a goal with his head off a free kick. That was soon doubled by Ronaldo Damas, who stumbled initially but found his footing again to finish into an open goal from close range.
things would go from bad to worse for Oakland in the second half. Max Orn still adjudged to have started this confrontation on the edge of the box. Looks like he might have swung an elbow. That was enough to see him sent off and Roots go down to 10 men. Orange County will make it free. The wind holding up the ball on the cross, but eventually Aiden Apodica getting an opportunity and unleashing a rocket to see his side take the three points with three goals. Next up, Sacramento hosting New York Red Bulls 2. An early start for them as Luis Felipe Hernandez gets a brace, the first coming here off a corner, the second shortly after off a quick 1-2 in the box. Not long before the break, Jerome Kizueta brought down in the penalty area, referee pointing to the spot. Darius Formella steps up, his initial shot saved, but he powers in the rebound. One small consolation for the visitors, Jeremy Raffanello with a looping shot from distance, but they fail to mount a comeback. The final score, 3-1. Sunday afternoon, Tacoma hosting New Mexico United. This one would finish goalless, but arguably the save of the game here as Defiance's Andrew Thomas does a good job on the one-on-one. -on -one. Final stop is LA Galaxy 2 hosting San Diego Loyal. Tough start for Galaxy, giving the ball away to Corey Herzog, who spots the keeper off his line and lobs him from a long way out. Then, later in the first half, Tumi Mushubani hopping on one that was headed down to him. That's how it would finish, San Diego taking it 2-0. So Rising remain atop the division, 7 points clear of 2nd place Orange County and 8 clear of San Diego Loyal. It's a battle for that last playoff spot, 4 teams within a point of each other. Tacoma currently leading that pack with 17 points from 13 games, Oakland Roots remain bottom, a disparity in games compared to the rest of the division but they are also 10 points back. Not a whole lot going on out west in midweek. Besides tonight's rising match, Tacoma will face Sacramento tomorrow night at 7, but that's all until the weekend. So let's move on to tonight's match, rising travelling to California to face Oakland Route. Not the first time the two sides should have met there, of course that last game being called off due to positive Covid tests in the Oakland camp. That game was supposed to be played at Las Positas College because Oakland's usual home stadium did not have a suitable turf playing surface. But what's the status on that now? Here's the latest update from Rick. Yeah, we don't know where we're playing. That's a good start. Um, it's a brand new field. Uh, from what I understand, it's six uh, pieces of turf that are, what did they say? 120 or 75 yards wide by 20 yards so that six strips across the field um and they're um and then velcroed together over a, on a platform uh so what it was described to me from a sacramento guy was that it's like playing on a, a gymnastics floor um and it's got some give to it, so it, it should be interesting. Um, the, I know that USL's had a referee look at it a couple times in the last few days. The installation was supposed to be completed last night. So the first thing we'll do when we get to San Francisco or Oakland today is I'm going to take the team and, and myself, we're going to go right from the airport on the bus straight to the stadium to walk the pitch so that we can at least understand what we're getting ourselves into. Um, but, you know, sometimes the good news is that they haven't had a lot of time on that field either and they're not used to it. So being the first team to play there is might not be the worst case scenario. Um, and at this point in our season and, and in my career as a coach, we just have to evaluate player safety 
And after that, uh, we move on and, and just play the game. Well, wow. nowadays with the technology, turf is pretty unbelievable. Um, you know, there's give, there's, they can get it wet, they can take care of it. The more concern I have is the seams, what the seams are like and something that's Velcroed together is that, that, that would be my only concern. I just haven't seen it. <clears throat> so I need, I think I'll, it'll be good for the players to be there and the players to walk on it and look at it and have their own thoughts and ideas. And um, it's kind of my job to observe the guys and either motivate them or, or support them in a decision that we make as a group. Rick, just following on there on the pitch, if you're not happy with the pitch or if you know, USL isn't happy with the pitch, does that mean that the game's going to be moved to the other college site or is it off? I don't know. Um, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, all I know is there have been a lot of fields that I'm not happy with and we've played on them. Um, you know, and so I think, look, as long as USL and, and pro referees deem the field safe um, and they don't, they shouldn't put the decision in my hands, but I'll go out there and I'll have my own thoughts and concerns on it, obviously. Uh, but, but there's a lot of people that have to be responsible in, in the fields that, that these guys play on. So, um, like I said, I think it's important for the players to see it, to be able to um, kind of sleep on it and understand what's expected of them the next, uh, the next evening. Well, there may be question marks around their pitch, but what about their team? Rising beat them 3-0 the last time these two sides met back in May. But what's changed since then? Well, um, I think they've, they've, they've struggled a little bit with COVID over the past couple of weeks. So uh, their roster was a bit thin. Um, I, I, I think it'll be real similar to what they played against Orange County on the weekend. Um, they've got some good players. They got a lot of guy with you, guys with USL experience and everybody seems to play about 10% better when they play against Phoenix Rising. So our expectations are that it, this will be difficult. And if we're playing at Laney College, there, there might be seven or 8,000 fans and on a difficult surface, every amount of adversity that we can possibly face. And, and this is when our guys have to show that um, that their talent and, and work ethic can, can get them through something like this. So I know they're focused and they don't want to ruin, uh, they're on a good run right now and they don't want to ruin that. This game right in the middle of a stretch of three in eight days for Rising. But will Shantz be looking to make some changes to the squad to rest up players? It's not happening Wednesday. But I, but I don't know... Uh, Again, we I, I, we're not going into a pre-planned rotation for this trip. Uh, we are bringing two extra players, so we'll have 20 guys with us on this trip. Um, and it allows us to see how the guys feel after Wednesday night's game. And, and then if we do need to make some changes for Saturday, we'll be able to. Maybe not wholesale rotation, but there could be the addition of a new face. Here's the latest on Manuel Madrid's status. Manu has been cleared and, and he's available for selection now. So uh, hopefully we can get an opportunity to, to get him some minutes and see how he does uh, with the team and, and, you know, keep building that depth and, and pushing us to, to be a better team. Well, first of all, his strength, uh, extremely powerful, very intelligent defender, understands the, the system very well, um, very, very good with his feet. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's almost worrisome when you watch a guy like this play in the back because he's so calm. He never stresses out. He he's not. He makes good decisions. Um, tackles. You know, we 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 call it a man tackle. The way he goes in and and you know hits people and pushes them off the ball. He's. Uh, I mean, this guy's what you know. 6'4", about 185 pounds, and he's solid muscle now. So um, he's going to hopefully, uh, a lot like Joey Farrell, in a sense that he brings that power and physical aspect to it. Um, it's going to be one heck of a competition. You know, I think we've continued to upgrade all the time, but, you know, Farrell and Musa have been doing fantastic. So 
you know, it's it, at the end of the day, it's we have to pick the two guys that are going to keep getting results, but you need some depth. Well, that's all we have time for today. Tonight's game, a 7 p.m. kickoff on ESPN2. Make sure to tune in on Saturday for a full-length preview of Rising's trip away to Vegas. Until then, enjoy the match. Goodbye.